Let's talk some chess. This game was played about four years ago between Ben Feingold and Eric Rosen, two awesome figures in the chess community, both great players and, and great content creators. Uh, they're playing this game online, so both of them are streaming the game, and someone was kind enough to synchronize those two streams so we can see both players talking about the same move at the same time. I'll link that video below. Um, and uh, yeah, just fun to see a game between two great personalities. Uh, it's a three-minute game, so we'll cut them some slack. They're not working with a ton of time, uh, but in any case, Ben opens us up with uh, d4. We have knight to f6 by Eric, knight to f3 by Ben, and knight to d5 by um, Eric. So standard stuff, both knights are... Um, protecting uh, the respective d pawn. This is called the queen spawn opening, and you've probably seen it many times in your game. In your games, here Ben goes for bishop to g5. This is the Tory attack, obviously threatening to capture the knight and you know mess up Eric's pawn structure. And here Eric uh, brings the knight to e4, which is not the most common move in this position, but it's a fine move. Uh, you put the knight on e4, where it's, it's quite strong, and you attack this bishop on g5. Um, and Ben wants to keep the bishop pair for now, so he plays uh, bishop to f4, getting it away from the attack of the knight and eyeing this uh, c7 pawn in case the queen eventually moves away. Uh, Eric deals with that immediately and just plays c5, so challenging this pawn here on d4. Um, ben defends his pawn again. It was already defended by the knight and the queen, but he defends it a third time uh, with e3. Also opens up a path for his light squared bishop to develop. And we have uh, knight to c6 by Eric, adding another attacker to this d4 square. Uh, knight to d2, knight b to d2, I should say, uh, by Ben, doubling up the two knights and also adding an attacker to this very strong knight on e4. And here bishop to f5 um, by Eric. Uh, just developing another piece. Bishop to b5, pinning the uh, the knight to the king, and now queen to b6, attacking this bishop uh, and developing the queen nicely to this to this b file. So here, uh, Ben goes for a trade. He takes on c6. Uh, pawn takes back. Ben makes a little joke here. He says, "Oh no, he took back." Um, I, I, you know, you probably are aware of, of ben, Ben's got an amazing sense of humor and just funny. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm butchering the joke, so we'll just move on. But watch the video. It's, it's quite good. Um, uh, and now Rook to B1. And this is Ben's first sort of mistake of the game. Uh, the idea is clear. You want He wants to protect this pawn on B2 from the queen attacking this pawn. Uh, but you can actually ignore this and just castle kingside. Um, and then if queen takes on b2, you just have this rook to b1. Um, and even after queen takes to a2, um, you could even go for a perpetual here, uh, just the rook and the queen sort of dancing back and forth. Um, but, uh, you know, you have this open b file for your rook. You could um, advance the rook if you want. The queen is not being very useful. It's quite far from the, uh, the white king. So the correct move was just to castle. But alas, we have this rook to b1, which is a, a sensible move, if not uh, the best. Um, e6 here by... Eric opening up a path for his dark squared bishop to develop, and now uh, cast castles king side by Ben. So uh, the same move we, we wanted to see a move ago, but and now he's got his king tucked away safely. Bishop to e7 by Eric, preparing to castle king side, and now knight takes on e4. You want to get rid of this really powerful knight that's just controlling a bunch of squares in uh, your camp. So uh, knight takes knight is a very reasonable trade. Bishop takes on e4. And now knight to e5. Ben's trying to get a very powerful knight of his own. Um, and here, the best move is... Wait, is that... I'm sorry. Uh, I'm getting lost in the lines here. Never mind. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about this in a later line. Uh, here we just have rook to d8 by Eric, which is an interesting move. Getting the rook more into the game, I guess, waiting potentially for this d file to open up. Now, you know, if Ben wants to trade here, then I guess the you have a pass pawn, or not even a pass pawn. Not, not really sure what the idea here is, but you're definitely getting your, your rook into the center of the board, so it's it's a principled move, um, at least. Uh, ben does actually take, uh, d takes on c5, and now uh, bishop takes on c5. Now you have a battery with the queen and the bishop eyeing this king on g1, although the king is protected for now by these two pawns. Uh, queen to g4 now, uh, getting the queen into the attack, eyeing this g7 pawn, which is undefended uh, for the moment. Um, Eric blocks with the bishop on g6, so now the queen cannot pick up this pawn. And you know what, I, I just remembered. I should note that, uh, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I feel like I, I wrote down the reason for this move and then just told you I didn't uh, know the reason for the move. Uh, here, Eric had the idea of castling kingside, but this would be a disaster because of knight to d7, forking the queen and the rook. Um, so the idea behind this rook to d8 move, which I completely forgot, um, is it prevents uh, knight to d7. Uh, so Eric can castle here safely. So that's the idea. Sorry, I forgot uh, a second ago. I did write it down, but I just forgot to look at my notes. Okay, 
So uh, pawn takes, bishop takes, queen to g4, now bishop on g6, blocking the queen, uh, which is now eyeing the g7 pawn. Um, and now uh, Ben tries to get really aggressive and plays h4, uh, just wants to march this pawn uh, down the alley and, and uh, kick out this bishop and, and get an attack going. And Eric says, I'm okay with that. Um, I'm going to castle kingside and try to deal with this attack. And it's a pretty scary attack. You have a knight, a bishop, a queen, and a pawn, all uh, very close to the enemy king. Um, and so it, it'll be curious to see sort of how this develops. Um, here, Ben actually has a, a combination that leads to a winning position. Um, and uh, it's kind of a surprising looking move. Uh, it's bishop to g5. And I, in this position, he played the very natural move, h5. I think we'd all play that in a second. It looks very strong, and we'll talk about that line in a moment. But the proper move here is actually bishop to g5. And the idea is that you're attacking this rook on d8, which again is guarding the... Uh, the square on d7, which will allow uh, the knight to fork the queen and the, the rook. So now it's kind of tough to deal with this. The the best move for the engine is just to retreat the rook and then knight to d7 and, and it's a fork and you've won, you know, you're probably going to, the queen will move and you'll, and you'll pick up the rook. So you've just won the exchange. Um, it looks like you can play uh, f6 here, although Ben always does say in his videos, never play f6. It looks like you can play this now forking the knight and the bishop. Um, but this doesn't work incredibly because of queen to e6 check. And now that's the, you know, that's why you don't want to play f6. Uh, the, the spirit behind not wanting to play f6 is that it weakens your king side, it weakens the pawn structure. And after, ooh, sorry, after f6, uh, the e6 pawn is undefended. Queen check, uh, king has to move to h8 um, because you can't block with either of these pieces. It doesn't really make sense because the knight is guarding the f7 square as well. So uh, the king retreats to h8, and now knight takes on g6 with check. Um, and after pawn takes, you even or you have this uh, bishop to f4 move. And now uh, this is a quick material count shows that Ben is up a pawn, but more importantly, the pawn structure is totally destroyed here. Uh, this bishop and this queen are quite close to the enemy king, and, and this is a, a much better position for Ben to both attack and defend. So um, a, a winning combination here. But I think uh, maybe Ben was looking at this and this h5 move just looked too good, too natural. Maybe after f6, he was worried about this fork. Um, so, you know, three minute game, we, we can't really blame him. Here he plays the, uh, the move h5. Um, uh, and it looks like this is starting to get scary for Eric, but it does allow this bishop to f5 move. Obviously, the pawn is protecting the bishop, which is now attacking the queen. Um, and here, Ben just retreats the queen to g3, keeping it on the same line as the enemy king. And now Eric does go for the move that Ben always says not to play, which is f6. He wants to kick this knight away. He wants to stop this threat of d7, forking the queen and the, the rook, and I guess the bishop as well. Um, so uh, f6 trying to get the knight away. Um, but now Ben plays uh, the even more aggressive move, uh, h6. Forgetting about his uh, knight on e5, this looks like a sacrifice of of course, it's not really a sacrifice because if pawn takes knight, then queen takes on g7 is checkmate. So you have to deal with this. Um, but it's, it actually is very okay to deal with this just by playing g6, which is what Eric plays. And now this is an incredibly solid defensive structure and the attack has basically petered out completely. Um, instead of h6 in this position, the better move here was for Ben to play knight to g4, uh, just sort of trying to keep the attack alive, keep the knight alive after uh, bishop takes, queen takes, um, pawn to e5. You have to retreat the bishop, but you sort of still have some momentum on the g-file. After you push the pawn to h6 and now uh, g6 is played, it's all over in terms of the attack. So this happens a lot uh, in my games, at least. I'll just push a pawn until it, it just runs into um, enemy pawns and can't move anymore. Now it's going to be very tough to get around this blockade. So unfortunately, what looked like an exciting attack has uh, has sort of lost some steam. Um, ben recognizes that and he plays knight to d3, retreating the knight and attacking this bishop on c5. Um, and here e5 uh, from uh, Eric, and this was kind of the critical move in the game. Both players were like, whoa, did I just trap the bishop? Um, or Ben was like, oh my God, is my bishop trapped? And indeed the bishop is trapped. There are only two squares to move to and both are guarded by pawns. So here um, uh, Ben goes for some, some trades, or sorry, sacrifices the knight for two pawns. So knight takes on e5, pawn takes, and bishop takes. And now um, now you have you just gave up a knight for two pawns. Um, and essentially, you just have one bishop versus the two bishops, and you have uh, two pawns to show for that. And Ben says in the video, um, bishops are usually better, which, which obviously uh, makes sense. So here, uh, queen to b7, 
Eric's trying to, he mentions in the video he wants to get the queen to b7 and then the bishop to e7 and then just, you know, play strong, uh, play solid, maybe force Ben to run out of time. Um, so he, he prepares that with queen to b7 um, and then hoping to get the bishop here. Uh, but now Ben uh, plays what he calls a, a tricky move. Um, he plays b4 attacking the bishop. Um, now you can't, uh, you can't take uh, on b4 because even though the rook is attacking the, the bishop, the bishop is defended by the queen, but more importantly, you have this a3 move, and now the bishop is pinned to the queen, so you're going to lose the bishop. So Eric, of course, sees that and instead retreats uh, the bishop to uh, b5. I'm sorry, b6? No. Yeah, b6. Um, and now uh, now Ben plays rook to c1, and this is not, um, yeah, not the, uh, you know, he, he is worried about this bishop gobbling up this pawn on c2, um, but obviously not the most active move to just sort of uh, block your rook in on, on the c file, protecting this, uh, this c1 pawn. Uh, queen to uh, e7 by uh, Eric, now attacking this bishop on e5, which is protected by the queen, um, and now c4 by Ben. Um, uh, so, you know, he, he wants to play c4 in this position, but he can't because the pawn is pinned to the rook, so he prepares it with rook to c1. So maybe, you know, not so bad uh, after all, but it does, does take a little bit of time to get that pawn moving. So queen 2, e7, uh, c4. Um, ben calls this an explosive move, which is one of his jokes. I, can, I definitely cannot uh, claim that. And now bishop to e4 by Eric. Uh, this bishop will be very happy to sit on e4, and, and obviously both bishops are now quite potent, slicing towards uh, Ben's king. And now c5 uh, by by Ben. Um, and this was another uh, this was another sort of scary moment for Eric. He just said, "Oh my gosh, did I just trap my my bishop? The only squares that the bishop can move to are there, are, are either ugh, uh, guided guarded, not guided, guarded by pawns or attacked by uh, both the bishop and the queen." Um, so, you know, if you move your bishop here, it looks like this is just, uh, you know, you, you can't, uh, you're, it looks like you're going to lose the bishop. So instead, Eric plays the move uh, rook to f5. Um, and this was really the, the critical moment in, uh, in the game here. Um, yeah, th this is, this is the, the critical moment. Ben basically says, okay, it looks like Eric is threatening this rook to g5 move. And the idea, let's just see, if the rook comes to g5, this looks pretty scary because the rook's attacking the queen. And if the queen moves away, um, then, uh, you know, you have this uh, rook check and this looks this looks quite bad. But at the same time, Ben mentions that his bishop is hanging on e5. So he has to worry about this rook to g5 threat and this rook takes uh, bishop on e5 threat. And he he try, he spends a lot of time in this position, position trying to figure out what to do. So um uh that's sort of our cue uh take a second and see if you can find uh the position or the move for for ben here um he actually has a way out of this and uh, a way into a winning position so take it take a second and see if you can find uh the winning move here for ben okay so believe it or not, uh, we just talked about those two threats um the the bishop is attacked by the rook and the queen so the bishop is hanging and also you have this rook to g5 threat. The correct move is to ignore, or the, the correct idea is to ignore both of those and just gobble up this bishop on b6. And this achieves two things. It, it captures the bishop and it now threatens to potentially promote the pawn. Um, and what's important is this queen square on b8 is guarded by both the bishop and the queen. So let's see how Eric could respond to this. Um, one idea is just to play um, rook to g5, the same idea attacking uh, attacking the queen here. Um, but then the actual move, which you sort of had to see, um, that keeps the position alive is uh, incredibly bishop to d6 by Ben. Uh, and this is a this is an awesome move. Uh, you are moving the bishop back into harm's way by the rook and the queen, uh, but the bishop is attacking the queen. So let's sort of see what happens here if we look at a bunch of different lines. If you just go ahead and take the queen uh, with the rook on g3, then bishop takes queen, and now after this very scary rook to g2 uh, check, the king has to go to h1, uh, rook to f2 check, uh, discover check from the bishop, king back to g1, and now uh, you could even go into uh, perpetual here. So I, I guess I shouldn't have said a winning position for Ben, but a position to sort of save the game. Um, and here there's there's no way to really improve on this uh, position for Eric. So I think when I check the engine, um, yeah, when I check the engine, this, this is just a, a, a drawn game. Um, even though this is a very nice sort of 
uh, uh, windmill attack here, uh, it doesn't, you can't improve on that position at all. Um, so that's, that's one option is to, if you take the, the queen with the, with the, uh, rook, what if you take the bishops, let's say you take the bishop with the queen, this would actually be a, a massive mistake because of, uh, queen takes on g5. And now, uh, the queen, now you're just up material. You have, uh, two rooks, uh, for a rook and a bishop. There's no more attack against Ben's king and, 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 and uh, and that would be a mistake. An even bigger mistake is actually taking with the rook on d6 which looks very reasonable. You're keeping the queen in defense of this rook on g5, but now you have the incredible b7 move. And this is my favorite line in the position. Um, now you're threatening to promote on b8 because there's no longer a rook on d8 that's guarding uh, sort of this queen square. Um, so now uh, here, really the only thing you can do, even if you bring the rook back, then you can promote and, and the queen is uh, protecting you know, the promotion square. So that's fine. So here you need to uh, take the queen on g3, but then you get uh, pawn to b8, promoting to a queen. This comes with check, um, and after the queen blocks and there's a queen trade, now you have pawn takes on g3, opening up a discover check from the rook, and now uh, you uh, uh, Eric is in check, and Ben has two rooks for a rook and a bishop. So hopefully, you know, that, that made sense. I know we did a bunch of lines, but um, I just think it's a, a pretty cool line to just ignore both of these threats and just take the bishop here um, and create this threat of the pawn sort of marching along to the eighth rank and realizing that this potential uh, rook and bishop attack doesn't actually lead to checkmate. It's just a more of a drawn game. So uh, hopefully you saw that this move bishop takes. Ben unfortunately didn't see it. We can't blame him. He, did, he didn't have much time left on the clock. Instead here he plays um, uh, a move that we did see uh, that pro proves very useful in this line. He plays bishop to d6, uh, attacking Eric's queen on e7. But now this just, it doesn't work because this allows sort of a bunch of trades to happen. Rook takes, queen takes, queen takes, pawn takes. Um, but now this pawn is much less powerful because there's still a bishop on the board on b6, and now the bishop is guarding the queen square on d8. And now uh, we're very much in the end game. Eric has uh, a rook and two bishops against two rooks, and that is going to go um, the two bishops way almost all of the time. So uh, tougher for Ben to sort of find a way out here, um, but we're going to see another opportunity that he did that does arise. So d4 by Eric, um, he takes on d4, rook to f8. Uh, uh, and now b5 by Ben trying to achieve a breakthrough um, or at least open up the c file. Oh, sorry, open up the c file for his rook to uh, join in the attack. There was one final chance for him to get back into the game here, and it was rook to e1, uh, rook f to e1. You're attacking the light squared bishop here, which is forced to retreat, but now you get uh, rook takes on c6, and now these are two very active rooks, and you have a passed pawn, you have two passed pawns on the same uh, d file. Um, and you can fight your way back into the game here. I think your position is actually slightly better, but instead he goes for this uh, b5 move. And after c takes on b5, then uh, d7 threatening to promote here. But this is not really a, a viable threat. You have the bishop and the rook guarding this queening square. Um, here, Eric just blocks it. Uh, ben brings the rook to c8, and this looks scary. But again, the bishop on b6 is, is taking care of it. And that's why it was so important in the other line we saw to capture this bishop, because it's such a good defensive piece here on the eighth rank. So um, Eric puts the bishop on f5, threatening to capture this pawn on d7. Uh, we have Ben doubling up on the c file. Bishop takes, rook takes, bishop takes. And now it's just two bishops against a rook, and the two bishops are, are going to win. So there's a, you know there's a bunch more moves. We'll go through them very quickly. We have a rook lift. King moves, rook to uh, d5, attacking the bishops. King protects, uh, rook plays defense, king to d6. Um, and yeah, we, we don't have to go through every single move, but you can see Ben sort of just trying to push his pawns, Eric trying to push his pawns, and eventually Ben is forced to sacrifice on b1 to prevent a queen from coming into the game. Bishop takes, and now Ben had like two seconds left, so the next couple moves were just like super crazy. Um, ben just pushes the pawn. Eric allows uh, pawn takes bishop um, to promote his own queen, and now Ben actually uh, promotes his pawn to a queen and then runs out of time. But this is this is not, you know, Ben had no time left on the clock, so Eric wasn't playing, you know, the, the best strategically here. But anyways, a fun game. Um, I went through, because there's no PGN of this game I, that I could find, so I went back and did all the moves out as the video went on, so hopefully they were accurate. Um, but definitely a fun game. Two great chess personalities and some cool moments in the game that are fun to analyze. So um, thanks for watching. Drop a like, drop a subscribe. Let me know of other games you'd like me to review, and we'll see you next time.